So um, uh, this presentation, it was presented about a month ago in the SNI, Baghdad Neurosurgical Meeting. And today I would like to share it with you again. So I'll talk here about the, my pathway in neurosurgery as an experience from Iraq. How am I a medical student interested in neurosurgery? How did I start my passion in neurosurgery? And what I'm going through right now? I mean, how I'm progressing in this uh, uh, neurosurgery. So first of all, uh, before starting um, my story, let's have a, a bit of scientific overview about heart to brain circulation, how the blood supply reaches the brain. Here from the, uh, the heart, we have the aortic arch. Here on the right side, we have the brachiocephalic trunk, two subclavian arteries, two common carotid arteries, divide at the level of C3, C4 cervical vertebrae or in front, the thyroid gland, the thyroid cartilage into internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. The external carotid artery supplies the head and neck structures and the internal carotid artery runs inside the skull to supply the brain and the eye. Here the, from the internal carotid artery will give us the anterior uh, part or the anterior half of the circular fullus and we uh, with the two terminal branches, the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral arteries. That was regarding the anterior circulation. Uh, you, you, you can see I'm really quick about it because it's just uh, an overview. And then we have two uh, uh, basilar, uh, two vertebral arteries coming from the subclavian arteries united in front of the pons to form the basilar artery, which contribute to the posterior circular fullus by two posterior cerebral arteries. That was the overview about the circular fullus. Uh, if I extend my anatomical uh, uh, like knowledge uh, and going deep with the uh, external carotid artery here for, on the right side, the brachiocephalic trunk. This is the common carotid artery, and this is the division, the external carotid artery. Here we have the two terminal divisions of the external carotid artery, the maxillary artery, which runs deep in the face, and here the superficial temporal artery with its two terminal branches, the uh, frontal and the parietal divisions of the superficial temporal artery that runs outside the skull. And inside the skull, we have the middle cerebral artery just uh, inside, deep to the skull bone. Uh, and we can notice the proximity between the middle cerebral artery here in the red and the green superficial temporal artery. Well, ju not just anatomy, there's a clinical correlation. We can connect to uh, these two vessels, uh, which we call the cerebral revascularization. Uh, it's really complicated in neurosurgical procedure in which, for example, here we have uh, an occluded internal cerebral, uh, inter internal carotid artery on the right side. So instead of the blood flowing in the yellow arrows here, uh, if, if there is an occlusion, so the distribution to the middle cerebral artery or the anterior cerebral artery will be cut off and there will be ischemic changes there. So how we can manage such a, a thing, such a problem, we can make a use of the external carotid artery here showing the black arrows runs out the outside the skull. And then this is the superficial temporal artery. We can anastomose it directly with the middle cerebral artery and by burning a, a hole in the skull and making a connection between the superficial temporal and the middle cerebral artery. And then the blood flows backward retrogradely to supply the area distal to the occluded internal carotid artery. So here we, we have solved the problem. This is called a direct bypass or cerebral revascularization. So we are revascularizing the area that has a cut of blood supply. Here is a simple diagram. Bypass, for example, in cerebral aneurysms. It's not used only in cerebral aneurysms. If we have uh, another diseases, uh, myomoye disease, if we have a tumor compressing the vessels or anything else. So here, for example, the red flow shows the normal blood flow that should happen in normal people. But if we have an aneurysm over here and we clip it proximally and distally to get rid of that aneurysm, how can the blood flow from the proximal artery reaching distal area to supply the brain? So here is the bypass. It could be a saphenous vein graft or radial artery graft. We can use any of them depending on some indications that are, are uh, really complicated to talk about. But the saphenous vein graft for example, has a wider diameter, the radial artery has a smallest diameter, and so on. We depend on the flow, high flow or low flow. So the blood will pass from the proximal artery through this bypass sideway. This is a graft going from proximal to distal area, shunting the blood to revascularize the area. 
So that was uh, just the beginning of my presentation for today, the pathway of neurosurgery. So that was one of the first things uh, I did three years ago, or maybe four years ago. I studied the just the anatomy, the vascular supply of the brain, and connected to the cerebral revascularization. I studied the advanced neurosurgical anatomy using the rotonic cranial anatomy and surgical approaches. This is a microsurgical anatomy book, Roton. I studied and go through seven bypasses by Michael Lawton and a color atlas of cerebral revascularization by Robert Spisler. I go through these books and had an idea about such a thing, which is really advanced. Uh, while I, I'm studying, or I was studying Roton, uh, I studied the second chapter of it. It was named the supratentorial arteries. The supratentorial arteries means the circle of fullest above the tentorium, which uh, Jafar tell us about previously in his presentation. So I, I didn't just uh, read the chapter. I did my own summary. I wrote my notes by a pencil on a paper and highlighted some things that I may recap, need to recap later. After that, getting all the theoretical knowledge, I attended a real surgery for a bypass in Iraq. I think it was the first or second in the history of Iraq doing a bypass, cerebral revascularization. The patient was a young age female. She had a moya moya disease, uh, which indicated doing the bypass surgery. Here is me with the team uh, during that operation. After that, going through my journey, I had the theoretical knowledge. I applied it to a clinical correlation. I attended a surgery for that type of operations. And then uh, I did a live webinar on neurosurgical TV. It was my first time doing a live webinar on such a great thing like neurosurgical TV. It was on 31 December, 2020. Uh, it was a real nice experience doing it publicly international level. My whole story started in 2019 uh, when I met my mentor, Dr. Sam Hoz. Here are some pictures of me. Here is in the RCU. Here is in the radiology unit. I spent sometimes days in the hospital, neurosurgical teaching hospital. I, I've been in the fifth mentorship program in the neurosurgery teaching hospital. Here is with my colleagues there. We were doing cadaveric sheep uh, craniotomies. The saying were that more lab simulation, less brain complications. So that when you simulate, do a practice on lab, for example, on eggshell, we had the opportunity or chance to practice drilling so that we just drill the outer layer of the eggshell without puncture it. So just simulating how delicate we can um, uh, use this instrument during neurosurgery. Here is me do, doing this drilling using the uh, loop. This is magnifying loop. This is a cranium of a sheep extracting the brain with its intact dura mater after doing craniotomy. These are some bar holes we've practiced. This is the sheep brain. This is the dura mater us holding it, separating it from the brain. And then after all that, we uh, attended a, a real emergency surgery on a real patient. They did for him a craniotomy. He has uh, extra dural hematoma, and here's the hematoma being drained. So we practiced how to do such a surgery on animals, cadavers, and then apply it on real life patients. I've been to the Global Training Project 2021 uh, by Upsurgeon uh, Psychomotor uh, Skill Training. They provided us with multiple uh, samples uh, of a brain, just like real brain. This one is the terrional approach. Here's the Sylvian fissure. Here's under microscope. Diving, uh, here, here, here is us, me, for example, uh, training to use the microscope. Here is a laparoscopic approach. The radiology skills, one of the most important things that I've learned 
uh, it was really important uh, tool for every neurosurgeon to be uh, good in, uh, for example, CT scan, angiography, MRI, T1, T2, what is the difference between them, even catheters uh, and geography. I've been assisting in many operations, neurosurgical operations. I did uh, practice at home for suturing and then did on real patients. Uh, one of the things that I really re learned to be important as a part of neurosurg neurosurgeon is the teamwork. So for example, here's all the pictures with our team. And another thing that's important for us is the rapport with the patients. It's really important. My mentor taught us how to build a good rapport with the patients, not only with the patients, but also with my colleagues and, and friends. I've been the organizer of the sixth Iraqi neurosurgery mentorship program. It was held during the pandemic era. The conferences I attended actually two. The first one was the seventh Emirate International Neurosurgical Conference in Dubai in, Dubai in uh, 2019. I was just an attendee. I just see the international level of presentations and uh, international neurosurgeons giving, uh, producing their, their works. And I've been to the first Pan-Arab Neurosurgical Dandy meeting. It was held in Beirut in 2022. Here's the uh, Iraqi team there. This time I was not just an attendee listening and seeing what people are doing, but I did an oral presentation at the American University of Beirut. The topic was our uh, recent published article there, the control over superior sagittal sinus injury due me to metabolic uh, metallic ceiling fine blade injury. Actually, there is a prize. There was a prize for the uh, top five presentations. I won the second place prize uh, in that uh, conference. Me in the medical school, I took the basic neuroscience course in the second grade. I took a very good credit that year and the advanced neuroscience, including neuromedicine and neurology and neurosurgery and even radiology in the fifth grade, I took excellent credit in it. Well, about the acad academic experience, I'm interested in uh, uh, medical education. I have many courses done, for example, in medicine, internal medicine, uh, the cardiology, ECG, and fluid electrolytes. I also have uh, courses on the vascular supply of the brain, free on YouTube, and also did a live webinar, the cerebral revascularization. I have more than 70 hours of medical education, so that's my academic experience. About the clinical experience, I attended about more than 15 operations. I attended more than two gamma knife procedures in the vascular unit attendance, emergency room, and even the ICU. Uh, the exportation concept is really important. Well, I have all the knowledge pertained to me. I, I, the theoretical knowledge, the practical knowledge, how I export it to the uh, global level. Well, I have a, uh, uh, an account on ResearchGate, and I have a YouTube channel, and I have a playlist. One of the playlists of mine is the uh, neurosurgical-related playlist. For example, the basic supratentorial arteries and the bypass surgery. I have participated in two books in neurosurgery, the pineal neurosurgery and the neurotrauma in multiple choice questions. I have three articles. Uh, assisted in. One is the intrasternal papaverin toxicity, and the other one is the, uh, which I presented orally at the American University of Beirut, the surgical control of a superior sagittal sinus injury. And the last one is letter to editor, the cadaver free simulation training, which was on uh, cadaveric sheeps. About the attendance of scientific activities and achievement, the most important thing I want to highlight is that every year since uh, 2019 till 2020, 2022, I have a new thing uh, to be accomplished, a new achievement. And hopefully in 2023, there will be a new thing to be achieved. 
how I how do I see in neurosurgery, for example, here as shown in these pictures, I see it just like a goalkeeper in a penalty shot that everyone knows it will be a goal, but if the goalkeeper saves the penalty shot, he will be the hero. So it's just like that. It shows how difficult the neurosurgery is, how complicated, how everyone is desperate about it uh, if they don't go dive deep in that branch. But actually, sometimes it could be saved, just like this goalkeeper holding the ball in his hand after a penalty shot. About my current position, uh, I was one of the founding members in the Dandy Neurosurgical Club of Iraq. I was the uh, chief scientific officer, and now I'm a president of uh, Dandy Neurosurgical Club of Iraq. Thank you very much. I hope you uh, enjoyed uh, this, my pathway in neurosurgery from Iraq, and uh, I'm ready if you have any questions to be answered. Thank you very much. <laughs>